Because this study uh, was done using internal funding at Los Alamos and because it was controversial, it was subjected to rather intense peer review. The laboratory invited uh, scientists from all over the United States, from universities and from national laboratories to come to Los Alamos and for a day they would uh, uh, quiz Clater about the details of the, his experiment. And each, each time this was done, the group came away agreeing that this was good work, it showed an unusual phenomena, and the work should continue. Uh, well, the work did continue at Los Alamos for a while until the uh, DOE uh, brought it to a halt. The work is now being done at a private laboratory outside of Los Alamos. Besides the production of helium and tritium, other nuclear reactions are found to occur in the cold fusion environment. And in electrolytic cells containing palladium uh, cathodes and platinum anodes, other elements are found on the cathode that were not present before the experiment started. The most common of these elements reported are copper and zinc, with these other elements in lesser, uh, less often reported. It would appear that the palladium after taking up a proton or a deuteron, splits into two fragments which, which are these elements. If the split does not happen, then these elements might be formed as more deuterons or, or protons are taken up by the palladium. The problem is to explain something so heavy as lead. Well, an electrolytic cell, when the anode is platinum, platinum is transferred to and deposited on the palladium cathode surface. So platinum would be available to suffer the same kind of reaction that the um, palladium suffered. In other words, deuterons or protons would go into the platinum nucleus in sufficient number to build up to form these elements. This is an example of what is called transmutation and it's, it's an aspect of the uh, process that is being seen more and more often as people look in, with more detail at the production of uh, unlikely elements. Imamura in uh, Japan at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries has been studying the transmutation reaction over the last several years and as a result has gotten some very amazing results. I'll talk about this in more detail but let's first look at the conclusions, look at what they found. They discovered that cesium can be made to take up four deuterons to form praseodymium. Uh, strontium can be made to uh, take up four deuterons to make molybdenum and barium can be made to uh, take up six deuterons to make samarium. These transmutation reactions have been uh, examined a number of different ways using several different types of uh, <clears throat> methods of analysis uh, and in addition to that the work has been replicated in Italy and in Japan. Well, let's now examine how they go about getting these results. First of all, they take a piece of palladium and pass deuterium through it. Deuterium being on one side and the vacuum on the other so that deuterium is caused to diffuse through the palladium. Now the palladium contains a, uh, a a number of layers on the front surface that consist of alternating layers of palladium and calcium oxide. And these layers alternate in this region and then finally there's a calcium oxide and a thicker layer of palladium. On this surface is deposited the target element. 
can be cesium, it can be strontium, or it can be barium. And then it's simply exposed to the diffusion of gas. Well, here's the result of the diffusion. They analyzed the surface using x-rays, and this is the concentration in two separate samples of uh, cerium. And this is the concentration of the expected product, presidimium. And you notice over time, the presidimium concentration increases and the cesium concentration decreases on the surface. They find that the uh, conversion rate of cesium to presidimium is proportional to the amount of gas that has passed through the sandwich. And there's a linear relationship between the two. You notice that there's quite a bit of scatter when you look at uh, the material that's been electrochemically added to the surface, but when ion implantation was used, the scatter is much reduced, but the same effect is seen. A sample of this palladium after the conversion process is then looked at with a uh, x-ray uh, beam that has a very small cross-section of only 100 microns. And you can see the detail that they get in analyzing for the presidimium using this technique. Well, the amazing thing is that they see the presidimium only in certain spots on the surface. In other words, the entire surface, most of the surface is inert. There's no reaction whatsoever and the presidimium is being converted only in certain regions. This means that these regions must be rather novel and unusual compared to the general surface. This kind of behavior, that is localized reaction, has been seen using the other techniques as well. Well, the use of barium provides another uh, uh, evidence for this reaction. Barium has a major isotope at 138 and a number of lesser uh, isotopes at lower mass. When the barium takes up six deuterons to make samarium, that mass distribution is carried over into the samarium so that uh, samarium 150 now is uh, greatly enhanced where it's not a very uh, uh, and it's, it's not very highly concentrated in, or, in ordinary samarium. Well, this wasn't sufficient proof, so they used barium-137 uh, enriched. And here you see the original material enriched in 137. And when it has taken up six deuterons to make samarium, it's now the samarium-149 that is enhanced. So you can see that the isotopic distribution of barium is carried over into the nuclear product. <clears throat> there is no nuclear product between barium and samarium. In other words, the de deuterons go in as a unit in, in each case. I think we can now see why the LENR is so hard to replicate. The active material is present only in very small regions. The active material is a complex alloy with an unknown structure and composition, so you don't know what to look for. And you don't know where to look. And the active material rarely forms. It's generally formed by nature uh, if she's in a good mood. And it's very difficult to make it form on purpose. The challenge, therefore, is to make the alloy on purpose and in large amounts so that the, the phenomena can be made to replicate whenever you wish and 